the design hypothesis couldn't even begin to do that because it raises an even bigger problem than it solves. Who made the designer? Dawkins' central argument, in his words, of his book, The God Delusion, is this uh, claim that you cannot infer God as the designer of the universe because you're left with the question, who designed the designer? Now, in fact, this argument is a very bad argument uh, for a number of reasons. For one thing, it does not prove atheism, as Dawkins supposes, even if the argument were entirely successful, it doesn't go to prove that God does not exist. At most, all the argument would prove is that you shouldn't infer the existence of God on the basis of design in the universe, that that would be a mistaken inference. So if you believe in God, you should believe in him on some other basis, the cosmological argument perhaps, the ontological argument, a moral argument, maybe on the basis of religious experience or revelation. Uh, the only thing his argument would prove, even if it worked, is that you shouldn't infer God uh, as an explanatory entity for the appearance of design in the universe. But that having been said, does the argument work? Well, not at all. What he mistakenly thinks is that in order to recognize that an explanation is the best, you need to have an explanation of the explanation. And that is clearly mistaken. For example, if archaeologists were digging in the earth and came across um, implements shaped like hatchet heads and tomahawk heads and arrowheads and pottery shards and so forth, they would instantly recognize that these were the remains of intelligent design, that there was some unknown group of people who had made these artifacts and they have happened upon them. Now, they may not be able to explain at all the origin of those people, who they were, how they came to be there, but that wouldn't matter to the inference that these artifacts are the products of intelligent design. You don't need to be able to explain the explanation in order to recognize that it's the best. Or again, if astronauts were to find a pile of machinery on the backside of the moon, and we realize that neither we nor the Russians have launched such machinery into space, they would infer that this is the product of some extraterrestrial intelligent designer. Now, we wouldn't have any idea who they were, what they were like, how they got there, but nevertheless, we would recognize that's the best explanation. You don't need to have an explanation of the explanation in order to recognize that explanation is the best. In fact, if you did have to have an explanation of the explanation to see that the explanation is the best, that immediately leads to an infinite regress. So, what is the problem of an infinite regress, right? Now, if you say that the cause of the universe had a cause or what created God, then what stops you from saying, well, what caused that cause, that cause, that cause? And what stops you from saying, well, what caused that cause, that cause, that cause, that cause, that cause? And you can go on forever, basically. Now, if you went on forever ad infinitum, we would never have the universe come into existence in the first place because you cannot traverse the infinite. You cannot traverse that distance. Now, to put this into perspective, I'm going to give you a very simple example that I normally share, and that is of the bus, right? Now imagine, if you like, it's a very bad drawing, but just for the sake of the example, just go with it. Now imagine if there's a big red bus, right? And this bus is the means by which I go home every day, right? So I have to go home, and for me to go home, I have to get on the bus. So the event that's gonna take place is me getting on the bus. Now for me to get on the bus, I just realized I don't have any money on me, right? So I have to borrow some money. So what I decide to do, and I need a pound by the way, just one pound. I asked the person behind me, can I borrow a pound? Now the person behind me says, I will give you a pound if the person behind me gives me a pound. Now imagine the person behind him says the same thing. I will give you a pound if the person behind me gives me a pound. And he said, well, I'll give you a pound if the person behind me gives me a pound. And if this went on, this went on ad infinitum, would I ever get on the bus? That's the question. Think about this, because the answer is very simple. No, that event would never take place because the pound would never be given. The chain would go on ad infinitum. And this is what I mean by you cannot traverse the infinite. We will never get to the point where the event actually takes place. So what we're saying in other words is that the universe we live in, if you say that universe one 
was a cause of universe 2 which was a cause of universe 3 and this then went on ad infinitum for example we would never have universe 1 come into existence because the chain would go on ad infinitum for an infinite time of course or infinite number of causes hopefully this clarifies this particular point hence and shows why the question well who designed the design is a very irrelevant question and this is why philosophers have said well take your pick either the universe is infinite or eternal or the cause of the universe is eternal it's your choice you can't you can't have your cake and eat it basically and inshallah in the next video what we can do is go into discussing or well, which is it is the universe eternal or the cause of the universe eternal inshallah jazakallah here for watching brothers and sisters may allah bless you all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Now, the first point I would make about that is this. If you ask the question, who created God? You are thinking of created gods. Now, the ancient world knew all about created gods. Actually, we call them idols. And people don't believe in them usually nowadays. So if Richard Dawkins really thinks that what he's demolishing is belief in created gods, then good for him. But he could have written a far shorter book because millions of us don't need any convincing that created gods are a delusion. So that's the first point, and I believe it's quite a serious point actually, because if he thinks that the God means you must be able to say who created God, then he does fall foul of that criticism. The other flaw is this. He thinks that the inference to a divine designer doesn't advance your explanatory power because the designer is just as complex as the artifact to be explained, and therefore there's no advance being made. Well, I think that's completely mistaken. That confuses a mind with a mind's ideas. A mind's ideas may indeed be very complex. This mind may be thinking of the infinitesimal calculus or zermelo frankel set theory or something of that sort, enormously complex ideas. But a mind as an entity is a remarkably simple thing. A mind is a non-physical, mental or spiritual entity that has no parts. It's not composed and therefore it has no complexity to speak of. It is probably the most simple thing that we can conceive of. So the postulation of a, an unembodied, intelligent mind behind the, cons, uh, behind the universe is definitely an advance in simplicity over the variegated and contingent constants and quantities inexplicably present in the universe. So for those two reasons, I think this argument, which Dawkins seems very proud of, is really quite sophomoric and, and quite hopeless. It, it, it is astonishing when you read Dawkins how he almost uh, breaks his arm patting himself on the back in self-congratulation for having discovered this argument when for, for years people have always said things like, well, who created God or who designed the designer? I first said we need to ask, what is the evidence for atheism? And here Dr. Slezik uh, says that the only evidence against God's existence is the absence of evidence for God's existence. Now this admission is highly significant because it means that he tacitly agrees that all of the traditional arguments for atheism, like the problem of evil or the incoherence of the concept of God, all of these arguments fail. The only argument for atheism is the absence of evidence for God. But the problem here is that the absence of evidence is not necessarily evidence of absence. 
Uh, to give an example, most cosmologists believe that the universe went through an era of inflationary expansion soon after the Big Bang. As yet, we have no positive evidence, however, for this era. But does that mean, therefore, that such an era did not exist? Well, obviously not. Or to give a more mundane example, we have no evidence that there is gold on the planet Pluto. But does that mean, therefore, that there is no gold on Pluto? Well, clearly not.